Yes, you have been wrong and you've been wrong for a long time. But look, don't worry. A lot of other people have been wrong for many years as well. So look, don't feel so bad. And that's why I'm here to set the record straight for you. And this is something that has bugged me for years. And that people have just got this wrong all this time. And what is that, you ask? Well, it's the misconception that this bloody movie is a sequel. And, and it's not, my friends. No, 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 it's not. It's a reboot. What, don't believe me? Okay, I'll give you Exhibit A. I mean, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance is definitely not a sequel. You know, I think sometimes with these reboots... Not really a, a sequel, it's, it's kind of a reboot. Okay, awesome. Now that we have that out of the road, we can get to what we're here for, and that is a review of... This is a live action superhero film that comes in at 95 minutes and was released into cinemas on the 17th of February 2011. It was later released on a DVD and Blu-ray by Sony Pictures Home Entertainment on the 27th of June 2012 with no 4K HD release as of this video. The film was written by Scott M. Gimpley Seth Hoffman and David S. Goyer, and was directed by Mark Neveldine and Brian Taylor, with the movie being produced by Marvel Entertainment, Crystal Sky Pictures, Hyde Park Entertainment, and Imagination Abu Dhabi. The film experienced worse critical reception than the first film, but still managed to make a profit, earning $149 million worldwide on a budget of just $57 million. And the film was also nominated for two Golden Raspberry Awards for the worst actor, Nicolas Cage, and worst remake, ripoff, or sequel. Worst thing I have ever seen. The film follows the story of Johnny Blaze, a man who made a deal with the devil. And he is on the run, trying to make sure no one is harmed by his alter ego, the Ghost Rider. He is approached by a monk named Moreau, who tells him that he can help him be free of the Rider's curse. But first, he needs Johnny's help to protect a boy named Danny. But there's a catch. Satan is looking for this boy too and has a uh, personal stake in the matter. But if Johnny can find Danny first and save the boy's soul, there is a chance Johnny can save his own soul as well. I saved your soul, Dad. The screenplay for this movie is a bloody mess. <laughs> And its lack of coherent storytelling just leaves you more confused than entertained as scenes feel very haphazardly thrown together with little regard for pacing or narrative flow. I mean, a real major problem of this script is its constant setup of plot points, only to forget or disregard them literally moments later, leaving you confused as you struggle to piece together this disjointed narrative and as a sort of byproduct it struggles to find its footing as it jumps from one poorly developed subplot to another with little rhyme or reason resulting in a story that just lacks any sort of coherence and it fails to build any real momentum the script is just Oh my god, it is just riddled with cliches and tide tropes, with characters speaking in, uh, at best, cringeworthy a dialogue, filled with cheesy one-liners and sometimes some over-melodramatic monologue, combined with uh, clunky exposition, stilted exchanges between actors, and poor attempts at humour failing just flat, it creates more of a cringeworthy more a cringe-worthy element than a compelling movie. And look, 
character development is virtually a non-existent with many of the film's key players feeling like characters rather than fully realized individuals. Well, let's face it, the villains fare even worse in this department with them coming across as little more than generic evildoers with very vague motivations revolving in lackluster and forgettable antagonists at best. Additionally, the film's attempt at exploring themes of redemption and sacrifice are just poorly executed throughout with the script that lacks the nuance and subtlety. It just keeps opting instead for more style over substance with like flashy visuals visuals and a bombastic action sequences to try and to try and compensate for this really lackluster script. Ultimately, this script falls short by delivering a disjointed and uninspiring narrative that fails to leave any lasting impression. And for that, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 30. Cheer up, my men. Soon, you'll be free. This film was an original story and not a direct adaption of any specific comic book storyline that I could find. But I tell you what, if it was based off a comic, we should round up all those comics and burn them. <laughs> I digress. Now, this time around, we get a darker-looking Ghost Rider, to which one of the directors, Brian Taylor, said, and I quote, This version of Ghost Rider was darker than the first film and will be based off the miniseries Ghost Rider Road to Damnation by Gareth Ennis and Clayton Crane. And just to clarify, that's the look, not the story, okay? And in my opinion, it looks... It looks shit. That is one big pile of shit. Sorry, it does, okay? Here... Here's a comparison, okay? And you have to admit, the first costume is way better and looks more like the superhero everyone knows. Not this other piece of garbage, that's for sure. And look, let's not forget the bike. So no custom built bikes this time around. As you can see, it's very different. And granted, it's a budget thing, I get it, but try and put some effort in for crying out loud i mean look here here's a shot of the bike normally and the ghost rider version the ghost rider version is just spray painted black with some bubbling around the edges nice work prop department money well spent what where did all that money go now if we look at the cast list here it's a real mixed bag that's for sure with a couple of well-knowns a couple of has-beens and some up and comers, but in the end, no one is going home with any Oscars for this movie, that's for sure. So let's look at our star, Mr. Nicolas Cage, who is back to reprise his role as Johnny Blaze. And this time around, he goes full Cage in this movie, turning up his trademark eccentricity up to 11, resulting in a portrayal that feels more like a character then a fully realized character that's for sure and then we have idris elba as moreau while he is a talented actor in his own right that's for sure he's given really little to work with here and his role is pretty ordinary and oh my god that fr french accent yeah you should really have given that a miss all right no french accent Look, as far as our main two villains are concerned, Kieran Hines as the devil slash Mephisto and Johnny Whitworth as Ray Carrigan, they both deliver what can only be classed as cheesy, campy and just downright forgettable performances as their respective characters. But for me, the worst actor here has to be Violanta Palaccio. I hope I got that right as Nadia Kench. She was just absolutely terrible, given what can only be described as a mix of awkward, 
and melodramatic at times. It's pretty clear she was chosen due to the budget and not her acting skills, if you know what I mean. So, which which is a lot of misses here. There is a lot of misses here for me, and I'm going to give this a 4 out of 20. That was awesome. <laughs> okay, as we look at the disc, I don't mind this cover. I really don't. Uh, I like that picture of Ghost Rider on there. It really gives you a good look of him. And I guess they kind of took my advice from last time. Don't put your stars on there. Put Ghost Rider on here. This is what people want to see. So that's what they've done this time around. Not that they actually listen to me, but you know what I mean. If that's your star of the show, is Ghost Rider. Now, if we look at the side, pretty stock standard, just the logo there. Now, on the back, a little more effort than the last time. Uh, definitely up their game just a little. Does, doesn't look too bad at all. I like that when they put... It doesn't hurt just to put that little bit more effort in, that's for sure. And as we look at the disc, um, it's just sort of that etched uh, picture on the front, which is a bit disappointing, and no picture on the inside like the other one had. So they went a little bit of effort on the back, but no effort inside. So that's actually a little disappointing. Um, but yeah, overall, this is your pretty basic sort of standard of that time. Nothing too flashy, nothing too different. So with that... Look, I'm probably going to give this a 6 out of 10. The Raider must have him. You do enjoy your wine, Moro. Okay, so there are a few special features on the Blu-ray here, and they are an audio commentary by the directors. The Path to Vengeance, a six-part documentary on the making of, and some deleted scenes. So, look... For me, the documentary was very lengthy all up, and it was probably almost about an hour or so um, on content, and it's only really for people, say, like myself, who's doing a review to get information about the movie, or someone who's really, and I mean really, into the movie-making process, as it's really... It's not really entertaining, more just like this long-winded video diary of what happened while the film was being made from start to finish. I suppose one thing I did get from it that it really didn't make me a fan of the directors. Yep, both of them come off as well. A couple of gooses, if you ask me, to be honest. It is. It kind of totally explains why this movie sucked as much as it did. Because these guys seem to have no freaking clue what they are doing to, for me, that's for sure. Anyway, if special features are your thing, then do check them out. Otherwise, for anyone else, I'd just probably give them a miss. There's nothing really there of value for you. So with that, I'm probably going to give it a 5 out of 10. Is it the devil? The devil that walks among men? Does the devil own you? Answer me! As I bring up the Rotten Tomatoes scorecard, as you can see, the critics came in at, ooh, 19%. While the audience score came in at, yeesh, 31%. Well, that's just worse than the last one, that's for sure. But that's to be expected. Now, the critics were just brutal in their reviews. And let's say the audience as well, they weren't much better. <laughs> There was just the random one every so often saying, oh, I love this movie, it's my favourite movie. But it's hard to tell if they were just taking the piss or not. I'm not sure. But overall, it was pretty much panned by everyone. And look, if we round out the scores, we get, well, it's not hard to see where this is going. We get a massive score of 3 out of 10. Harrigan. See, you're still an unbelievable pain in the ass. So look, I never saw this movie in the cinemas. Hell, up until I did this review, I didn't know that it actually been released in the cinemas. I thought for the longest time, it was one of those straight to DVD releases as I hadn't heard anything, hadn't seen anything. The first time I ever saw it was when I walked into like one of my local DVD shops and there it was on the shelf. And I was like, wow, where did this come from? When did they shoot this movie? They've done another one? Where the hell did that come from? Look, for me, I think the reason this movie didn't do well 
okay, other than the terrible script, that's for sure, was those two bloody directors, Mark Neville Dean and Brian Taylor. These pair of fools seem to have no idea about the character, or for that fact, what to do with the character up on screen, which I think shows, which I think really shows when you have a shot of the Ghost Rider doing a flamethrower piss. I mean, that was just bloody dumb. It's the kind of joke a five-year-old would find funny. It wasn't funny! Let alone all the other poor choices that they made for it. This movie was just so frustrating to watch. As I said before, continuous plot points are constantly being set up, but then qu quickly forgotten about just as quickly as they got set up. <laughs> So, look, just for one quick example, just to give you an idea, and trust me, there are many to go through in this movie, but I'll just give you the one, is that it said early on in the piece, Ghost Rider only comes out at night, and by the end of the movie, he's driving around in daylight hours. I mean, Christ, what? where's the consistency here? Nothing about his story makes any sense! Look, I don't have time to go through them all. I'll tell you right now, but let's just say there's a lot there and it just pisses me off, that's for sure. It just gets frustrating to watch this bloody movie. And thank God these pair of jokers don't make movies anymore as this movie pretty much ended their careers as directors. As you can see from this little graphic I'll bring up, that's right, this was their last one. So at least something positive came out of this piece of garbage movie. <laughs> In the end, this movie was more frustrating and confusing than it was enjoyable for me, that's for sure. And that is why I'm going to give it this stellar score of... God, it's lucky it gets this. 3 out of 20. The danger will not pass, Morrow. As long as the boy exists... Okay, if we bring up collectability and availability. So for collectability, I'm definitely going to put this as a one because you don't need this movie in your collection. This is really only for people like myself who want the full, like a full collection. Uh, people who want full Marvel collections. Someone who's already got the first one wants the second one. But otherwise, if you're just a casual collector, don't waste your time or your money, honestly, because it's a terrible movie. Um, and it's not really that collectible at all. And as far as availability goes, well, if you do want it for your collection, you will have no trouble finding it, and it is just as common as the first movie. There are hundreds of DVD and Blu-ray copies out there for sale at reasonable prices. That's if you want to get one. So when it comes to your average price, you are looking at somewhere between the four to $12 mark for a DVD. But if you're going to go for the Blu-ray option, you are looking around the $8 to $24 mark. And of course, there is nothing for 4K HD as of this video. Now, for the final score, we get a grand total of 26 out of 100. Eesh. Oh, well, there you have it. A terrible score for a goddamn terrible movie. But as I said, there is an upside. At least these two, yep, these two guys, look, they can't hurt you anymore with their bad movies. Worst fucking deal I ever made. Hey, so if you like this video, you want to see some more of my reviews, click that one there. Well, maybe you want to see some of my collection updates. Got you covered too. Click that one there. And of course, don't forget to do the most important thing. Throw me a like, and don't forget to hit that subscription button on the way out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.